Eric McEnroe, Director of Farm Operations at McEnroe Organic. We are a 1,200-acre certified organic farm located in Northeast Dutchess County in the town of Millerton, New York. I have seen some events that were, were scary. We had a very bad hailstorm a few years ago in the middle of summer. It took a lot of crops out. It was quite devastating, actually. It was like the 25th of July when everything was ripe and ready to get picked and a uh, you know, big, big hail came down. Destroyed most of our outdoor vegetable crop. It was uh, well over 50,000 in damage, if not 100. So that was an extreme event. The, the rule of thumb around in this region is May 21st is the last p possible frost date. We got a frost the 23rd of May last year. So we make sure that we don't just, just go by the rule of thumb anymore and <laughs> yeah. don't plant anything too early. Of course, the droughts get a, get a little bit longer, it seems like. We have definitely seen more invasive species coming through and, and more pests. Last year, the rain was incredibly tough. With our compost operation especially, because we have a large area exposed with no vegetation really, because it's just kind of open. So you really get to see how runoff affects it. We've had a lot of roads wash out, the tomatoes crack. Just wet feet in general on all the vegetables isn't, isn't healthy for them as a whole. So we're fairly well-drained soil here, but there's definitely been fields that we couldn't plant in because they're just too wet in the season. So when you start losing 10, 12 acres field at a time, it adds up, you know, I mean, what's the opportunity cost to that land? And is it just, you know, just because it was too wet to plant? But th these are things that are dealing with, you know, being a farmer in the Northeast too. I mean, it's not like we're in the Midwest where you got flat open corn ground and that's all you're doing. We're planting a variety of vegetables and a variety of crops throughout the year. And uh, there's going to be bumper crops and there's going to be crops that don't make it as well. After the hailstorm, we've done a couple things. We invested in some more high tunnels, just protective structures to grow our tomatoes in. If it's a late frost, if it's an early frost, if it's hail, if it's blight, if it's birds, a closed environment makes things much easier. So yeah, we'll continue to invest in that. And, and, and any technology that's there. Like base of our operations are compost. And part of our model is to recycle and reuse as much as we can. Compost-based fertilizer is much different than like just a straight urea. It holds its nitrogen much longer and distributes it at a, a, a slow release. You don't have to worry so much about runoff. And I, I think conventional farmers as well, there's a lot of technology out there that they realize that you don't want to spend extra money to have it go down the drain, first of all, but also for the environmental aspect of it, that people are much more keen than they were 20 years ago. We have implemented rainwater collection on a large scale off our mechanical shop. We have a waste oil furnace. We have some wood gasification stoves, heater greenhouses. So. We've, we're always trying to find ways to reduce our energy imports. I think climate change is something that is never gonna stop changing. Everything changes, just how fast it changes and what are we gonna do to, to mitigate some of the risk.